back. Well, the Dead Sea is also an inspiration for art. And from California to Tokyo and now the Dead Sea here in Israel, Israeli-born, LA-based artist Dolan Gazit creates stunning monumental art. He says he wants to call attention to landscapes devastated by global warming. And his latest project is part of a series called The Red Line, is taking aim at the destruction of the Dead Sea. Our culture correspondent Maya Margit met with Gazit to discuss how his unique artwork reflects the danger on the ground. Doran Gazit is on a mission. He's traveled around the world with his environmental art, using dramatic landscapes as his canvas to create giant installations. His medium? 500 foot long balloons. I used to sell twisty balloons in the streets to make my living. Here you can see one of them. This is the first red line that I used like 30 years ago. So that's what I inflated to make my living. But then I wanted to make it bigger. These massive tubes are part of a series Gazit has produced in several locations across the globe called the Red Line. From melting icebergs in Alaska to the shrinking Salton Sea to the Sinai Desert. Unfortunately, it seems like Gazit will never run out of places ravaged by climate change. For me, the red line is a metaphor for a blood vein, and I'm using nature as a canvas. This time, Gazit is focusing on the most recent sites that have been devastated by the sinkholes around the Dead Sea. With a team of helpers, Gazit sets up his eye-catching art at the break of dawn. It's hours of painstaking work. But with the Dead Sea disappearing at an alarming rate, Gazit thinks it's now or never to make a change. And when I was a teenager, and that's uh, many years ago, uh, when I used to go uh, south, I always stopped here in the Dead Sea. The water was very close to, to, the, to the main road. Now you have to walk like two, two miles. So here you can really see it, it's very visual. Though this inflatable art might just be a drop in the sea, Gazit hopes it will bring awareness to the ecological disaster unfolding at one of Israel's most famous landmarks, showing where humans have crossed the line, all in a bid to keep the Dead Sea alive. Reporting from the Dead Sea, Maya Margit, I-24 News. And Maya Margit, our cultural correspondent, joins me in studio now. Maya, thank you for joining me. And for those two very special reports uh, we had from you today. So this time, Doron Gazit was at the Dead Sea. He was uh, at several other locations before, as we mentioned. Does this kind of environmental art, though, really have an impact? I think it's a very good question, especially for environmental art, because it's become a very popular kind of category of art. Uh, many artists are getting more politically involved, they're becoming more involved with the activists, and the environment and climate change is a really big topic right now. So for Gazit specifically, I mean, he doesn't leave any trace on the environment. He doesn't leave anything behind on the landscape. He takes everything back. Those giant inflatable balloons, they disappear completely. You know, an hour after we filmed this, it was gone. There was like, it was like there was nothing there. All that's left is the documentation, the film, the photographs. So for that specific Specifically, it's hard to say what the impact is. I mean, it does bring awareness. It does, you know, bring attention to the issue because the images are so stunning. Uh, but there are other artists who do something more direct. It's called eco art, and these are artists who directly go to an environment, and their art project is planting trees or you know cleaning up a beach, and this is how they they perform something. So there was a very famous project in 1982 by Joseph Buys called Seven Thousand Oaks, where they planted seven thousand oak trees, and this was considered an art project. But you know, so it really depends on what kind of art you're looking at. Some of the artists also apparently damage the environment by leaving things behind. Uh, well, planting trees is art in my book any yes. day. But Maya, I want to touch briefly with you on your report that we opened this uh, special broadcast with and maybe hear something of your experience with speaking with the tour guides there at the Dead Sea. I think what was really interesting is how unique the geological formations are at the Dead Sea. There's so much you can read about the state of the Dead Sea, what's happening there, just by looking at the layers of salt and mud. Uh, at some point we have the, you know, the tour guide licking the, the rock, that's really, uh, I thought it was kind of funny. But what he was looking at are the layers of salt and rock. So the layers of mud basically represent the winter, how much water and flooding and mud enter the Dead Sea. So if it's a very rainy winter, you'll see a much thicker layer of mud. 
if it's not a rainy winter and if there's not enough water coming in, these layers become much thinner. So what you can see is the lower, the deeper layers are much thicker layers of mud. And as they go move on to more recent seasons, they become much, much thinner, uh, showing that there's less and less rain possibly in the area. Well, that's uh, a sad prospect to think about and imagine. But I do agree that in order to understand something, you have to look at its layers. Mm -hmm. And uh, who knew that our cultural correspondent would bring about <laughs> the best uh, conclusion for today's special report. Maya Margi, thank sure. you very much for this. And thank you for being with us on the special report on I-24 News. That's it for us. Thank you for watching.